Yes, it's that time again. This one is Tokunu Speech Squash with a super strong flavor. And they even say here, strong flavor, delicious. Well, it does taste like peach. It tastes like the the peel of the peach. You know where it's a little bit more bitter? That's kind of what it tastes like. It's not bad. So for the past few months, I've been working on trying to improve my 3D modeling skills. I think I'm at a point now that uh, given enough time, I can make a pretty good 3D model. Now I'm not saying it's anything professional, but it'll pass in a video game, I think. Now my problem is everything that comes after that, like the texturing, the exporting into formats that a game engine is gonna understand, and the rigging and the animation, and all of this has to come together and be fairly easy to import and modify inside your game if you want to be able to quickly iterate on getting better visuals. And I haven't found good tutorial online on how to do that. There's super advanced tutorial on how to do super complex geometries in Blender, but uh, how to do good textures, how to export this into a game engine. And this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this, because it kind of depends a lot on which engine you're using, how you're going to export it, um, what you want to do with it. But I want to show you the process I went through to figure out what's going to work for me. So the first thing I thought is, if I can't find the tutorial I want for this kind of stuff, why not take inspiration from some great games example out there? After all, if it's running on your computer, then it's somewhere on your hard disk for you to enjoy. For this, I've been gathering spaceship design inspiration from all sorts of game and just making a folder of all the games I've seen that have some arts that I'm interested in. And one of the ones that come back really often is the design for Everspace. I just really love the look of the spaceships, the look of the visuals and all of this. So I embarked on a journey to extract any or all models from Everspace game and try to bring them into Blender so I can see how they were made. So of course the first step is just to install the game. If you don't have it, just go buy it and then enjoy it. And then you go into the installation folder and you try to look for the biggest file because usually the biggest file are going to be the textures and the sounds and the meshes and everything you want to look at. Now, in Everspace, it turns out that these files are called pack files. Usually, it's pretty common for games to package their data into a single big file. So this is probably an archive, like a zip file or something. And a quick Google search reveals that pack file is a standard archive format for Unreal Engine files. Now, that's pretty nice because Unreal Engine is free to download and install, so you can download any version and you can try it out with the files that are in Everspace folder and see if they work. Of course, there's a couple of caveats here. The first is that you have to figure out which version of Unreal Engine was used to build the game because not all versions are compatible together. And then also, of course, if you're unlucky, it's possible that the pack file is going to be encrypted and that means you're gonna have to figure out how to break the encryption. Now there's quite a few tools out there, you can probably Google it. It's usually not that difficult because, you know, the game that you're running on your computer needs to be able to unencrypt it, so somewhere there's the key to unencrypt the file. But, I mean, it can be complicated. But in my case, I was pretty lucky, I just downloaded version 4.20 of the Unreal Engine and I was able to use the Unreal pack that executable tool to unpack all the pack file without any encryption or any problem whatsoever. Now, even if you try to do this in Everspace, uh, the same as I did, it doesn't mean it's gonna be exactly the same version because you know if they published an update, they might have updated the Unreal Engine version and so you might need to try a different version. But in my case, 4.20 worked fine. Now, once you've extracted the pack file, you go hunting for the meshes and the textures that you're looking for. Again, there's no one solution for this, but in my case, it wasn't too bad. The folders were pretty well organized, so I just went into content, assets, vehicles, fighters, and then there was a folder with meshes, and I guess that's the mesh, right? Of course, there I was met with uasset file and uxp file. 
which I didn't really know how to open. And even though I tried to open them in Unreal Engine and they should be Unreal Engine files, I couldn't get them imported into a new project or anything. I couldn't see them in the engine itself. Thankfully, after a bit of Googling, I found a free tool that could open new assets file and provided I gave it the right version to process, it uh, could even convert the files into GLTF or PNGs uh, with the textures and everything. So it was pretty easy once I got the tool and I figured out how to open the files. And once the file were in GLTF, then it was a very easy process to import them into Blender. And then once all of this was done, I could take a good look at the UV unwraps, the textures and all of this. And it was very interesting. First, I couldn't make much sense of the whole thing. I mean, it looked quite messy and the uh, UV unwrap doesn't seem like um, something that was done manually. It, it looks like a smart UV unwrap in Blender where it just creates island based on the angle of the mesh and it creates all sorts of weird stuff. Um, it, it doesn't seem to have any kind of really smart, carefully crafted, you know, mesh and unwrap. I did spend a lot of time looking at this, trying to figure out how they might be modeling and texturing their ships. Like how are they painting it? Are they painting it in Photoshop by hand? Are they using, you know, texture painting? Is it, you know, a high poly model that was baked into a low poly model or something like that? I really was curious if I could derive the way they arrive at their final model using what I have available right now. One of the things I noticed is a lot of um, randomly generated noise in the roughness especially. So I'm sure they used some kind of automatic noise generation algorithm for some of the texturing. Then there does seem to be some kind of hand painting going on, probably using like something like Substance Painter or like in my case, I think it would be doable in Blender using the texture painting mode. I'm pretty confident in my programming skills but not so much in my art skills. So anything I say is most likely wrong. And so take it with a grain of salt. And if you know of a better way of doing things, please let me know in the comments below, because I'd really like to learn. But after a lot of fiddling around and playing around, I created a bunch of panels just with some angles, just to let the line shine on it a little bit. And I tried to see if I could reproduce what I saw in Everspace inside Blender. And I came up with a panel that kind of looked like this and I thought it looked pretty good. Now, how I did it is that I first started by looking at a bunch of um, tutorial online on how to make procedural material in Blender. And I generated a whole bunch of noise textures that I applied on top and layered on top of each other inside Blender, inside the material, and then a little bit of bumps, a little bit of roughness and all of this kind of stuff, playing with metallics value and all that. And there's also a couple of tricks where you can automatically mask edges and you can kind of give them a little bit of wear and lines so that it looks like the edges were more used than the rest of the panel. Then I also played with the idea of maybe having a hand painted texture, but instead of just manually painting straight lines and stuff, I thought I could potentially render some stencils of like a bump map, for example, and then paint this bump map on top as a stencil on my texture to add some details, which are only in the normal map or only in the color. For example, to paint numbers, I could just have the numbers and then paint them on top, like have the number in the texture and then apply this texture on my other texture that is the paint mask for the model that I'm rendering. Now I quite like this workflow because it's very non-destructive. I can go back and repaint stuff. I can change some of the noise texture very easily and it'll always recombine and show me the final results. But of course, this cannot be used as is in Godot or any other game engine. So I had to figure out how to pack this final result into something that the game engine is gonna understand. So that's where I go back to Everspace and look at how they manage their texture. Now I can see that for every ships, there's about four textures that is extracted from the pack file. The first one is called underscore C underscore AO, 
which I think means the C is for color and the AO is probably the ambient occlusion baked into the alpha channel of the color texture. The second texture is the underscore N, which looks to everyone like just a plain old normal map. Now the third one is a little bit more complicated. It's underscore R underscore MT underscore E. Knowing the PBR workflow, I could figure out that the R probably stand for roughness, which was encoded in the red channel. Now the green channel looked to me like the metalness. So I assume this was what it meant. And then the E was kind of strange because normally it would have been like, you know, metalness and specular or something, but E doesn't stand for specular, I think. And it's often pretty empty in most of the models I looked at. So I thought it probably meant emission, but emission is usually a color, not just a value. And so if I have only the blue channel, um, that means it's only a value between zero and 255. So someone on my Discord mentioned that it might be because this is the emission strength and that it has to be multiplied with the color texture, which I thought was very clever. So that's probably how what it is. Now there's one more texture that's underscore M, but this one didn't look like anything I could figure out in the PBR workflow. So my guess was that it's a mask texture probably used in game for some other gameplay related things, like maybe applying decals or changing the color of the ship dynamically or something. So I don't think in our case, depending on how you implement your game, I don't think it was very relevant to the look of the ships. And so with those three textures, I managed to bake something that I could bring into Godot and then write a small shader that would take those three textures as parameter and set the related values, meaning the albedo, the normal, the emission, the um, uh, metalness, and then the roughness, which are all part of the basic material workflow of Godot. And what do you know, with a bit of tweaking of the environment map, I think it looks quite all right. Now, I would probably have to spend a lot more time playing with the environment map and the lighting and the um, having like suns and light maps and stuff to really make it look good. But I think as an experiment into the whole process of exporting a 3D asset and bringing it into Godot, I think it has some really good promises. Now, this is all for this little space factory prototype I've been working on, and I'm still not sure if it's ever going to be an actual game, but I'm having a lot of fun playing around with it, trying some new stuff that I've never done before and improving the visuals and making some new models and stuff is always very fun. And this little exercise in Blender and in Everspace has really helped me figure out what I think could be a potentially really good way of handling the asset pipeline we call. So probably right now this is not viable uh, to do manually. I definitely don't want to have to, every time I make a change, re-export like six textures and then have to combine the red and the green and the blue channel together into the uh, Krita or something so that I can bring it into my game every single time I want to make a modification or something. So I'll probably have to figure out some ways of automating all this process, but it, it's already way more information than I had when I started and the results are very promising. And I think if this is the way that uh, Unreal and Everspace handle it, then it's a good sign that it's a good way of doing things, or at least that I'm not going to run into some really crazy limitations that I haven't thought about. But that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for joining me today and see you all in my next episode. Bye.